Hey guys, this is Michael from Concrete Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be going over some equilibrium ice table practice problems. This will be part one in the series where I'll show you all the different ways that ice table problems can be asked so you can be prepared for any problems that appear on your exam. Let's start with the first example. In this question, you're given the balanced chemical reaction. Uh, you're also given the Kc value of 7.2. You're given the temperature, although that's not too relevant. And then you're given the initial concentration of both the reactants are 0.2 and that there are no products. And then you're asked to determine the equilibrium concentration of the product. So since you're given an initial condition and an equilibrium condition, that's indication that we're going to have to use an ice table. So I'm just going to start by rewriting the chemical reaction so it's a little bit bigger. Then we're going to set up an ice table. If you're familiar, unfamiliar with what ice table is, I stands for initial, C stands for change, and E stands for equilibrium. This is a good way to allow you to keep track of what you started with and what you end with at equilibrium. The initial concentration of both the reactants were 0.200 molar, and there was no products to start with, so we'll put this as zero molar. Since the reaction started with just and reactants and no products, that means this reaction is going to proceed towards the product side. So that means the reactants will be consumed and the products will be produced. So for the C line, this will be minus X and minus X. We're using X here because we don't know exactly how much will be consumed since this reaction goes to equilibrium and not completion. And then on the product side, this will be plus 2X. Plus because it's, a, it's, it's getting larger and then 2X because there's a two in the front. And then the E line is just the sum of the I and C line. You can think of this as just these two lines added together and that'll give you the E line. So this will be 0 0.200 minus X. This will be 0 0.200 minus X. And then this will just be 2X. Now that the ice table is complete, let's set up the KC expression. So KC would just be concentration of products over reactants. So it'll be concentration of BrCl squared, because there's a coefficient of 2, divided by the concentration of reactants, Br2, multiplied by the concentration of Cl2. Then we're going to substitute the Kc value in, as well as the equilibrium values, equilibrium variables into the expression. So Kc is 7.20. The concentration of BrCl was 2x. And then we got a square because it's squared here, divided by the concentration, the product of these two. And both those are exactly the same. So we'll just write this as 0 0.200 minus x squared. Since it's squared on the top and on the bottom, we can make our calculation a little easier by taking the square root of both sides. And then when we do that, we get 2.68 equals 2x divided by 0 0.200 minus x. Then we can cross multiply and we'll get 0 0.537 minus 2.68x equals 2x. Add 2.68x to both sides. Then divide both sides by 4.68 to isolate the x. And that'll give us x equals 0 0.115 molar. So now, now we have the x, we can substitute it back into the E-line. Here we're just asked to solve for the equilibrium concentration of BrCl. You can see that the equilibrium concentration of BrCl is 2x. So then the equilibrium concentration of BrCl is just going to be 2 multiplied by the value of x that we got. And that will give us 0 0.230 approximately. If you kept all the numbers without rounding, then you might get 0.229 molar. If instead this question was asking us for the equilibrium concentration of everything, you can just take the x value that you got and plug it in to point, plug into here to get the concentration of Br2, and plug into this line to get the concentration of Cl2. Let's take a look at the next problem. So in this problem, you're again given the balanced chemical reaction. You're given the amount of SO3 and the volume. And then, you're also, and then you're given the equilibrium values of the SO2. And then this time you're asked to solve for K. So this is a little different. In the previous question, 
we were given the initial values and then given the k values and have to solve for the equilibrium values. This time, we're given the initial values and the equilibrium values and we have to solve for k. So let's uh, start by, again, writing, rewriting the reaction to SO3 gas in equilibrium proceeds to SO2 gas plus O2 gas. Again, because we're given an initial condition and an equilibrium condition, we can set up an ice table. Here, since all these are gases, we can solve for either Kp or Kc, but because we're given moles and liters, it's going to be easier to solve for Kc given the fact that concentration, which is molarity, will be equal to moles per liter, and we already have the moles in the liters. So we can write the Kc expression here. Kc is going to equal concentration SO2 squared, because it's 2, multiplied by the concentration of O2, divided by the concentration of SO3 squared. So what we just have to figure out the equilibrium concentration of these, and we can plug it in, and we'll get the Kc value. Since this is moles, we can't plug that in. We have to convert that to molarity. And molarity is moles over liters. So the initial, the initial concentration of SO3 is going to equal 12.0 moles divided by the 3.0 liters. And that'll give us 4.0 molar. The question doesn't mention anything about SO2 or O2 initially, so we can assume that we didn't have any products start, so this would be zero molar, and that would be zero molar. Once again, because we're starting with all reactants and no products, this reaction will proceed to the right. So then this will be minus 2x because of the coefficient of 2, this will be plus 2x, and then this will be plus x. Then the E line is just the sum of the I and C line, 4.0 minus 2x, 2x, and x. It tells us that at equilibrium, there are 3.0 moles of SO2 present. Because our ice table was in molarity, we should also convert this to molarity. So we can say that the con equilibrium concentration of SO2 equals the 3.0 moles divided by the 3.0 liters, which will give us one molar. So that means that this is going to equal to 1, which means that x is going to equal 0.5. So then once we have our x, we can just plug the x back into the rest, the rest of the e-line. This would be 4.0 minus 2 times 0.5, which is just 4.0 minus 1. So it will give us 3 molar. This right here was, was 1 molar, because it, it's 2.2x, 2 so 2 times 0.5. And then this right here would be 0.5 molar. Then now that we have all the, con the concentration of, of all the reactants products, we can plug in the Kc. So Kc will be the concentration SO2 squared, 1 squared, times the concentration O2, which is 0.5, divided by the concentration SO3 squared, which is 3 squared. Then we can enter that into the calculator. So it will be one, 1 times 0.5 divided by 3 squared. And that'll give us 0 0.05. How many sig figs should we have? Three sig fig, two sig fig, two sig figs. Our final answer should have two sig fig. So it'll be 0 0.056. And KC and KC, KP doesn't have any units, so that will just be our final answer. So that's it for the, f the first part. And the next part, we'll be covering more scenarios about how ice tables could be could be formatted. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry. If you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Acing Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.